Your Box. Hi, fiends. Thanks for joining me for Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. And joining me today is Michael Hargrove, who you may recognize from the new Candyman. I'm not so sure it's so new anymore, but uh, the new Candyman playing Sherman Fields. And welcome, Michael. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Donna Jean. Well, it's only a year and a half old. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm I'm thinking new by I just went to see Terrifier 2 last night, which is just mm -hmm. premiering now. Yeah. So a year and a half is still. Yeah, it's, it's still, still young. Yeah, I'm it's still getting residuals. looking back at the history of things. <laughs> when the residuals drop down to like $5 and $10, then it's old. That's how I right, see right, it. Right, right, right. You're right. You are so right. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm just getting up, but um, she set this time. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and our cats didn't wake us up at 4 a.m. No, today, no, so we're here. No, exactly. Or we just ignored them. <laughs> <laughs> no, good to see you again. Thank you it for inviting me. Good to me. see you again. Same. I had the delight of meeting Michael at the uh, Maryland Pop and Horror Con. And mm -hmm. How could one not to be drawn to such a person who just it, it exudes such a positive nature and smiles so much? So, uh, yeah, that's those are the drugs. Yeah, and my doctor <laughs> said take them three times a day and you'll be fine, but don't take them with coffee. No, it was fun, it was great being. I mean, um, I don't know if everyone knows this, but uh, I started doing this uh, the convention trip uh, treks in July. And it's the first time doing all this stuff. So it's just kind of fun just meeting people. And I was worried in the beginning. Oh, my God, they're going to come out. Oh, my God, I'm scared. But no, everyone's been so nice. And each of them I go to, it's like, been great, great. I, I was actually going to ask you, being uh -huh. kind of a new person to the horror scene, how yes. how you were, uh, were liking it. And it sounds as though it's working it's okay fun. for you. It's fun. I actually, when I when I did theater back in the day, um, you know, sometimes I, I do like some crazy stuff that didn't, <laughs> nobody cared about. But it was fun just getting in makeup. So it's kind of like heartens back to to that early times for me. So it's fun doing it, uh, the films, and also meeting all the people. It's great. Now you have my understanding is you do have a history of working in theater. In fact, you won. The, yeah, you really hear about this a lot. You won the Black Theater Alliance's Sydney Poitier Award Sydney in two thousand two. Uh, yes, so, I did. Two thousand two. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> so I was actually going to follow that with saying, so you must have been very young when you got involved at the theater. Oh um, God, yeah. I actually went to a fine arts school, the Alabama School of Fine Arts. I have bad things to say sometimes about it, but I have a good some friends there and some teachers I remember, and that's a good thing about it. Uh, and I and that was in high school. Uh, I let's see, I auditioned at fourteen, got in, and I was there for four years and moved on. So moved on and got involved with theater. <laughs> Did you find I moved that? on. Uh, oh, God. Do you want the full story? How long is this? Um, <laughs> I got cast in a part in Berkeley, California. I went out to Berkeley to be a swashbuckling theater sword guy. I was going to be the new black Earl Flynn. Yeah, right. And um, I went out there. <laughs> With uh, on a motorcycle and a couple hundred dollars in my pocket, and I <laughs> lived in Berkeley because it was cheaper than living in San Francisco. I lived out there for about a year, and we did the project. We worked hard. We did all of this, and then, and then we came back and said we did one night. Oh, we don't have any funding. Thanks for coming. Bye. <laughs> Good luck oh, with your bye. life. And um, so that was my exposure to um, moving on from high school theater to professional theater, so to speak. And then from there, I just um, came back to Birmingham, Alabama, which I was born, and uh, moved from there to Chicago. And here I am now. When did you decide or how did you decide to make the transition yeah. from theater to film? Theater to film came when I won the <laughs> Sydney Poitier uh, Best Actor Award. Uh, we had a theater company for a long time. It was National Pastime Theater. Um, myself and some good other um, personal friends, um, good friends still. 
we created the theater and it just didn't work, unfortunately, due to restrictions in the city of Chicago and politics, so to speak. And um, around the time that I did uh, Willie Bob, Willie Drop and won the award, the theater company was breaking up and pretty much was more or less a decision of everyone. I moved on and from there I went to commercial work. I got more commercial work. And then from there, um, bit parts and TV series and um, series and then moved into film. And I'm trying to stay in film, but I'll take anything right now. I mean, it's the way it is. You're, if you're an actor, you're going to do that. You're going to do whatever. So, well, within reason. <laughs> but um, and that's it. I'm, I'm in this now. I mean, I don't think I'll ever go back to theater. If yeah. I do, it'll be later in life, just to like for the experience of it. But to mm -hmm. think about theater right now, being on a live show, I don't know. <laughs> I understand. I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> I, I guess I've uh, spoken to a number of people who have said the interesting yeah. thing about theater mm -hmm. is that it's not, if you stumble and you fall, you trip over something, there's not a cut, yeah. we're going to redo it. You just have to make that part of the story. <laughs> so. Exactly. No, you have to deal with it. You have it. to keep a little more in your toes. Line, I, I have a whole, I have three lines. What are they? I can't remember them. <laughs> no, I don't think I want to go through that again. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm your film good. history includes mm -hmm. Tom Gustafson's, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, I believe LGBTQ, that's right. uh, where, the, where the World Mine. Yes. Which earned him a, a lot of uh, film festival awards. Yes. And when yeah. when I read about that and then I did go watch it, okay. the thing that get, came into my mind is mm -hmm. that the films that I'm aware that you're in mm -hmm. all seem to be very justice oriented, um, kind of wow. going to, you know, like pointing out some of the. Uh, the really? The, Ha! Ha! Yeah. Ha! That's great. Oh, really? that? That's great. Because that's great. Candyman is as well. Oh, yeah. Um, just, uh, and I just, just say it. <laughs> and, and especially with that being a musical, mm -hmm. you are such a talented person. <laughs> you are so good. But um, I didn't sing. It's a musical, but I didn't sing. <laughs> you, didn't. you didn't. But you still no. were an integral part of the, of the story. Yeah. And... Um, well, that's just good casting. It's, uh, that's one, I, I've been a director in a couple of films myself, and having to cast the right person, not necessarily because you know them or whatever, but the right person for the role. I mean, that just it's just good casting in that regard. Um, overall, that was a, that was my first movie. Actually, no, the first movie was a cell pictures called Outtakes. You okay. will probably find it. I'm not in it. I had a bit part where I'm the, the, the clapper guy. What is it called? The, the production person who stands with the clapper. And it was so okay. boring to me. I'm falling asleep and I'm doing that. <laughs> and I found it online and I looked through it and I said, oh my God, I was involved in this thing. It was horrible. Horrible. But luckily I didn't show up. <laughs> That well, was if, you're, if you're saying that, I don't have to go and find it. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's not worth it. If you want to see some 70s haircuts, sure, go ahead. <laughs> 80s, 80s, I'm sorry, 80s or 90s haircut. That's what it was. But um, that was the first one. And, and the, But what the world mind, what the world mind was the, the real one. Yeah, that boy, it's uh, so much just the, the world needs its eyes open to so much and uh Right. Thank you for being being a part of the opening of no, the album. Thank you guys for um, making me a part of it. That's the most important thing. Oh, <laughs> next question, please. <laughs> Did you have, while you were uh, growing up, getting into theater, whatever point, any inspirations, anybody that uh, kind of gave you a little bit of like, gee, I want to do this? Oh, do you mean like a, a mentor? Or I was, just an actor I admired? Uh, either one, however you'd like to answer it. Actually, the most important mentor I can actually give is my best friend, Brad, who passed away about four years ago. And he and I were inseparable. We did things together. And he was one of the focus of uh, why I wanted to be an actor. Just can, I've never said this to anyone, but his birthday was just recently, uh, September 29th. 
And uh, so I was thinking about it. And uh, from the standpoint, as far as that, looking back on my career, we kind of like tried to t outdo each other. We tried to outdo each other. So I would say he's the most um, important person at my t in the time of my life when I was an actor. The other person, which is something a throwback, which you, you may, people may know this, was <laughs> Steve McQueen. I always wanted to be a Steve McQueen character. I loved it. He was just so cool. He's just so fucking cool. <laughs> it's just like the movies he did. I mean, yes, there was Sidney Poitier and the other actors and so on. Yeah, it's, 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 think about the time that I grew up. But Steve McQueen was like, yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. he was one of the, the, the main forces as far as like thinking I could do film. Hey, I could do this. I mean, he's not doing shit. I could do this. Oh, is this a family show? Sorry. <laughs> he's just showing his face. It's okay. But, you can, you can. You can curse. If you want to. <laughs> I could get on a rant. Don't say that. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, I would say, yeah, looking at the films that he did, which were kind of like uh, controversial, that kind of mm -hmm. like said, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. But Hollywood was not in my heyday at the time. So I had to stay in the theater. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> Well, you never know. Your time could yeah. be moving into the the, the no. Steve McQueen era of cool. <laughs> Black cool. <laughs> Black cool. <laughs> you open up the dictionary for cool and it's Steve McQueen. Yeah, yeah. That's why I got into motorcycling as well, too, because I just loved it. <laughs> anyway. Um... So to talk a little bit yes. about Candyman. Uh, yes. How did you get involved with the film? Did you just hear that they were casting? Did was there any? No, story? no, no. It was a well kept secret that um, uh, the Candyman was being uh, a version of Candyman was being done, and I auditioned for a film which I knew nothing about. It was basically a, a couple of lines on a sheet of paper, and I had to improv. And I was like, "Oh, improv around that? Okay, great. That's it. That's fine. I can do that." No big deal. And, you know, I had just lost my job at the time. And it's like, oh, sure, whatever, I'll do it. And, um, and I did it. I was ready to leave. And the casting agent said, oh, Michael, Michael, can you stay? Can you stay a little bit longer? And uh, for the actors that are out there that hear that and know that's, <laughs> you know where I'm going to go with this. When you <laughs> the casting agent comes out and says, can you stay a little bit longer? It's kind of like, oh, fuck you. Oh, damn. Oh, great. I might as well just go home now. He got it. But and I never thought I did. But I met with the director, and we did some more improvs uh, near the casa. And I didn't know I was in. And I think uh, shortly afterwards, I think it may have been like within that week, I got a call from my agent saying they'd like to cast you in the movie. And I said, Oh, oh, okay. What is it? Oh, you'll find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> And uh, can you be in makeup next week? And, or actually, it was the same week. And said, can you go to makeup on Friday? And I said, sure. Because they had to do a bust of me in the head and so on. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there for two hours, two and a half hours with the, like the, the plaster of Paris or whatever they use on, on my face with the straw mm -hmm. sticking out of my nose. And I'm trying mm -hmm. to breathe. And I'm freaking out. I'm like taped in like that. And then <laughs> the um, um, uh, makeup artist is asking, do you know what you're doing? It's like, no, I don't. He's like, what is it? What is it? Oh, you'll find out. You'll find out. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. So I didn't it's find unbelievable. Out. They kept it a secret, even when you were getting the... the no, it was it was a well-kept secret that they were wow. doing an adaptation of uh, Candyman. No one could know about it. I think my wow. agent knew, but she wouldn't tell me. <laughs> she wouldn't tell me. And um, and then I didn't know what I was doing until I actually I walked on the set and uh, Nita Costa and the producer was there. Uh, from uh, Monkey Paw, Ian, and they said, oh, you're going to be great. And they're just smiling. They're just so they're just smiling. And I'm like, what am I doing? Oh, oh, oh. It's like, tell me what the hell I'm doing. I'm like, I'm, what? this is not porn, is it? And, uh, and they're like grinning. And it's like, oh, you're one of the candy men. And I was like, what? You're one of the candy men. And it's like, we're, we're doing an adaptation of the candy man. You're one of the candy men. And that's how they said it. So, okay, interesting. And I'm thinking, okay, where's my cell phone? I got to text my wife. I got to let everyone know. And they said, you can't tell anyone. Oh, seriously? Uh, and that's okay. how it went for the entire year. Wow. When they were in production and so on. You could not say a word. 
And uh, I think they finally uh, allowed it to be known that the uh, uh, adaptation of Candyman was happening shortly, uh, a little after the pandemic hit in full force. Everyone was losing interest in the film. And then uh, Nia DaCosta came out with the um, stop animation um, of Candyman. And yeah. that kind of like allowed people to know, oh, they're doing Candyman, that sort of thing. And that's the story. So it's, it's pretty much, it was, so it was yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I mean, I look back on it now and it's like those dirty j- dicks. I mean, come on, <laughs> jerk dicks. And it's like, come on, tell me what I'm doing. <laughs> Not a big deal. But uh, it was fun. It was fun. That had to be too, especially with, you know, having a family and going about your life, I'm yep. going to go do this, but I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay to say now. I don't think I'll get in trouble. I did. <laughs> Eventually, it was like a couple of weeks later. I'm not even gonna get it. Can't say <gasps> she wanted to say everyone is. You can't. Don't post anything. Oh, and, I know. Uh, so I that so just bad. Now I'm going to get sued. Perfect. <laughs> George Bill's going to reach out to me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but no, you it talked was talked about uh, it on that interview now. Exactly. I heard now. You told her. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't tell anyone else. It was all good. Oh, God. Don't get into political. Just stay away from that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Did you about. have any, um, any particular experiences filming it that? would be a story that you'd want to share or? Oh God. Um, there was a lot. I mean, um, from day one, when I did the film, it was just starting on set. It was amazing. Everyone there, except for one person, I hate her. She knows who I'm talking about. Uh, everyone there, except that one person, um, just made it an experience to remember. And, uh, working with the director, the producers, um, uh, yeah, yeah, Boone Poutine, the uh, actor who plays the new candy man. It was like, it was, it was, it was, it was an experience. I mean, and I did not know it was such a big movie. I was thinking, oh, this is going to be just a small thing. But it ended up grossing a large amount of money. And, and obviously for the standpoint as far as the producers and also a following, which is there, which kind of okay. like they, they accepted me. That was a little worrying. It was, it was like, yeah. oh, and, I, and, and in the beginning, when they first released it, Candyman was being a, a re, uh, an adaptation was being done. A lot of hate mail, not mail, but like video. Oh, yeah, they got Michael Hargo. What is he? What is that? It's a static hook. It's not a hook. It's like, no, it, it's Sherman Fields, a different character. Right. Come on, exactly. Think about it. But, and, but yeah. it, I think more or less, the pe- even the persons who are the diehard Tony Todd fans, and there's nothing wrong with them, um, mm-hmm. some of them have come up to me and said, hey, what you did in the movie was great, but you never compare with Tony Todd. That's fine. And then I've had one person that show up and say, you sucked. Tony Todd was the best. As okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Bye. <laughs> now, the okay. question is, did t- like has Tony mentioned to you that he felt good passing on the uh, the hook? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I, I don't. I haven't talked to. Actually, I never had a chance to meet Tony uh, oh. because when I was on when, when he was on set, I was not on set. Uh, and and I didn't find out that he was on set when I uh, talked to one of the drivers. And I said, "Yo, God, you just missed Tony Todd." I said, "What? What? He was here yesterday. What? Seriously? <laughs> what, what's going on? Oh man, cool. Damn it! <laughs> hey, what needs but, to happen now? I volunteered yeah. all the Monster Manias. And I <laughs> we need to get a Candyman reunion and oh, get all of the Candyman in the same place." <laughs> <laughs> I was joking that. <laughs> I was joking that maybe Tony Todd and I could be like Candyman versus Candyman 2021. It could, you know, like the old sort of oh, game. Hooks and like, oh. <laughs> Point! <laughs> but, I do uh, have on my my Candyman earrings that actually. Oh, Monique cool! Made, cool. Just for the wow, occasion. The hell did you get those? <laughs> uh, well, Monique Dupree made them. She has a shop on oh, it. Nice. So the Thomas Kingdom is Monique's shop. So Candyman. Okay. Earrings. I don't Made think I could pull sister. it off. Uh, the candy man of Ethiopia, maybe, but I don't <laughs> think I could pull it off. Thank you, though. No. <laughs> well, I, I've actually, I'm a big lover of that film. And okay, um, cool, cool, cool. The, the interesting thing is I have had a number of people who I gather really didn't watch it and or didn't pay attention. Really? And say, well, 
well, I didn't like that remake. And I'm like, but it wasn't a remake. <laughs> it was a sequel. It was not a remake. It's uh, talking yeah. about what happened after a, and then kind of some a, of the history. But Right. And I have to be careful of me saying remake, but, you know, but honestly, it's not a remake. Watch it. For those who haven't seen it, I'm talking to you guys out there and looking in the camera. Just take a look at it. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Uh, but from the standpoint, as far as it um, being a progression of Candyman, right. I think it's in par, on par with the first one. I agree. I'm not going to say anything else about two and three. No, 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 no. This is going there. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but I think on par with the first one. Yes, definitely. I, I agree myself. Okay. So are you ready to be in another one? Is there going to be a, another? Oh, game? I have no idea. And honestly, from the standpoint, as far as that, I'm being honest, I think if anything, the, if there's going to be another one, it's going to be with uh, Yaya um, moving forward with Candyman. Right. But as far as what MGM Universal decides, it could be someone saying, you know, we did well with that first, uh, that first, what was that, remake? What was it? Yeah, the Candyman thing. Um, yeah, well, thing. Bring back Michael Hargrove for something. Throw, throw him in there and have him be a waiter. I don't know. It's up, it's up to you, the <laughs> MGM Universal and what they're going to do and what makes money in Hollywood, unfortunately. So that's why I'm looking to move towards uh, independent filmmaking and just to uh, see what's out there. A lot of indie films are out there, which I think, it's really where the money and the prestige is. No, not everything getting rich, but where the work is. And uh, so I'm, I'm hooked, hooked up with a new uh, agent in Atlanta, and uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna try to do it. I mean, why not? You know, I um, I do a lot of my my chats are mm -hmm. with indie filmmakers, indie actors. Right, right. Even Terrifier Two, which um, I was texting with one of the producers about it yesterday mm -hmm. and this morning. Yeah. And they are right now, they're on they, they're premiering and Terrifier 2 is premiering for three days in various theaters. And right, right. now it's number four in the country and it's an indie wow. film. In cool. Indie yeah. And it was, the thing about the indie films, and I really do think COVID mm -hmm. kind of made indie film the yes. new way to go. Right. Because, because the Hollywood was not going to hire anybody new or anybody unknown right. because they wanted to pull people in or at least sell in a box office to Netflix during that time and knew that the pandemic was going to be over with. So they wanted the big stars to be in the film. End of story. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Uh, and actually, unfortunately, COVID did help. <laughs> I hate to say that. That's one thing that COVID helped with. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. And it did help to establish a new way that this is done. And one of one of the fascinating things to me, being a long-term mm -hmm. convention goer, lover, volunteer, right. is the uh, with the indie films, the fans can become a part of the film by helping, by helping right. support it. Right. And that's and and so it's kind of like people can help to be a part of it and make it their own as well. Oh, and perfect. that's a very yeah. different thing than you know. Nobody would have thought about doing that. Like <laughs> Kong or oh, yeah, like definitely. That, you know? definitely. But, no, that's a good point. I actually, I, I agree with that. That's actually very true. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking that um, I'm hoping to uh, work with a couple. I, 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 won't, I won't say anything until it's signed. I can't say, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to say anything until it's signed. So I'm not going to tell anybody anything. But um, there was a couple of uh, uh, film producers or directors that came out to me and said, hey, I'm doing this in, in uh, May or June or whatever. Are you interested in being in the film? And I said, yeah, whatever. And I got the script and I was like, holy shit, this is cool. This is great. But I can't say anything about it. <laughs> when you're but, ready to talk about it, let's do this again. Let's do this no, again. No, that's a good thing. And that's the one positive thing about being on a convention other than like meeting a lot of people. The second one is... Uh, um, meeting um, persons who are interested in filmmaking and are really honest about what they're doing and not the bullshitters. Obviously, you know who they are. But in the standpoint, as far as that, meet, meeting people and moving mm -hmm. forward with their, their project. That was cool. That is cool. And there are a lot of them that yep. uh, that do do the convention scene, scene and film festival scene and all, all right. of that. So. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of like a little world unto itself. That's <laughs> very cool. Oh yeah. 
so uh, we got Candyman going on. We got some indie film things going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Do um, you have anything else going on that you're working? Oh with? yes, we talked about this before. Um, I am working with an author um, on a couple of his books. Uh, one so far he wants me to do. And um, uh, uh, Chris Tolper, uh, he's a writer. I met him at one of the conventions. He came up to me and said, "Would you like to do an audio voice or voices for my for my novel?" And I said sure do whatever and he just kept hanging around and he came back he came, and I was like well oh, you're serious about this and um uh I met a couple of uh, the persons and uh, writers as he, he's worked with we did a conference call and he's interested in me doing some voices and I said sure I've never done it before in my life for audible and I was like fine so that's upcoming uh I'm going to be out of commission for the next couple of months due to like um personal matters and uh, <laughs> I'll be traveling uh, Peru. <sighs> no, I'll be sitting in a hospital and recuperating from knee replacement surgery. It has to happen once in a while, so that's something. So I'm going to take that time to to look at his books, uh, work on his voices, and um, see what it goes with that. I would love to want to do Audible. It's, uh, I'm never, I, I love Audible, and in which case, this is not a plug. But it would definitely be interesting to do more voiceover work. You know, it's I, I know so many people who listen to books on, on CD, books on tape, all that. And it's something I need to look at myself because I don't have a lot of time to read. So mm -hmm. being able to do it while you're driving yes. you know, to a convention or back and forth. Well, or while you're cleaning the bathtub. <laughs> <Or that. laughs> exactly. Cleaning out the city litters. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> That's my next job after I finish on the phone with you. <laughs> so, so do you have your uh, your Bugs Bunny voice down yet? That's the question. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I didn't know how. Did Bug Bunny did, I don't. I didn't watch cartoons when I was a kid. What? <laughs> <Bugs> Bunny. <laughs> used to watch some cartoons now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, that will be that will be great to be able to uh, do a different form of art expression while you're. Oh writing yeah, oh yeah, and it it's it is easier too because you don't have to learn the lines; you can just read it. <laughs> okay, what was the line? What was the line? Uh, no. no, it's 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 a lot easier. A lot easier. <laughs> Idiot and actors who say, "Oh, I hate doing voiceover." They're lying. They love it. <laughs> so I have one more question to ask you before okay. we, uh, we close sure. up. Would you have any advice to give to a young person looking at wanting to get into acting? <sighs> Don't. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> don't do it. Run away. <laughs> okay. A lot of a lot of, a lot of people don't know this, but I was a property manager in Chicago for over 20 years. I mean, that's what I did to pay to pay to work. I never I tried, I tried waiting tables. <laughs> tried waiting tables for a day, went away. I tried to be a manager at McDonald's. I told him you can keep the money. I'm, I'm leaving. And uh I just can't do that. But a lot of actors for those who are doing those jobs and waiting tables and so on, I I commend you, God. Do, <laughs> nerve than I do um, is to have a full time job. Is to have a job that pays. To have something that actually is going to get you through the next to the next audition. Because that's, I mean, I didn't make a lot of money as a property manager. I made a decent living, but it was horrible because I would have to wake up at two o'clock in the morning, which is nice of your cat who had woken me up early that early. I'm used to it, and it was something to know that at least if you have a full-time or part-time or a job that's going to get you through to the next audition, you have to have that. The next thing is to do it. Just keep doing it. Get with some people. If you can't start a theater company like I did, um, or at least be a part of the theater company like I was, then you really need to just keep moving, motivated, do some improvs. I, I did the comedy circuit for a while. I, I tried to be a comedian. I got booed off the stage and I said, I'll try something else. But it was an experience doing it. And I met a, a lot of people just being in a calm and comedic environment like that, you know, being backstage. That's a great experience. Um, and honestly, from the standpoint, as far as uh, anyone who wants to be an actor, who wants to make it their plan to be an actor, <sighs> try to do it in the city you're in. Don't. 
I'm going to go to L.A. Yes, there are a lot of people who have gone to L.A. and have become famous and so on. And there's a lot of people that I know are still out in L.A. working that part time job because they can't get an acting gig or whatever. Just try, try, try Chicago, try Pittsburgh, try Boston, where you are. I mean, granted, I left Birmingham because nothing was there. <laughs> but from the standpoint, as far as um, those that advice I can give you, just <sighs> keep doing it. I mean, I'm 50. I'm, I mean, I'll admit it. I'm getting older, but I've been doing this since I was 14. Mm -hmm. Think about it. I mean, that's a long time. But mm -hmm. and I've I've done some horrible roles. I've done, I've done some great roles, and I'm obviously I did Candyman. So you just have to keep working at it. I mean, there's been times when I said I'm just going to do this job and I'm not going to do anything else. You can't give up. Mm. You can't. That's the best thing. Don't give up. Get a job that you like to do until the big break happens and try to work within the city that you reside. And don't try to put all your fortunes and dreams and moving to L.A. because it's like one percent of those guys that move out there become actors, famous actors. And then you could be that person. But I knew I was not going to be that person. So I stayed in Chicago and it worked out. <laughs> The old man Michael gives advice to the young actors. Oh, don't do what I did. <laughs> I think those are those are words of wisdom, though. So. Yeah. The words to live by and words I may have read somewhere once. <laughs> well, Michael Hargrove, thank you so, so much sure, for taking you. the time and joining us. I will look forward to hearing from you when you're ready to talk about that indie film. Okay. And I will contact you once everything is done. Once, once until <laughs> saying I'll do this and we'll pay you that is one thing. Until you sign a contract, I ain't shit. But I will definitely contact you. I don't mind. Okay. And I hope to run into you at a convention since you are now uh, attending <laughs> the conventions. Actually, I, I love. I like them. I like doing them. So I talked to my uh, uh, appearance agent, um, uh, Tony Rodriguez, and said, "Hey, first time doing it this year. I'd like to do it next year. Sure, why not?" So, Very yes, cool. you will see me again. <laughs> well, as far as I know, according to uh, the owner, uh, Billy Middleton, who is a friend, <laughs> oh, I'll, be working, I'll be working that uh, convention again. So maybe I, if, if unless Tony's with you being your handler, yeah, I'll be there well, so I can, I can a little bit. I mean, I asked for coffee one morning. He didn't get me any coffee. So, Tony, you know, <laughs> chopping pot. But Billy. <laughs> Billy's awesome. Oh, he's great. I love it. And his mother, too. <laughs> well, I didn't you. have the good fortune to meet his mom, so you really... Oh, she's a great old lady. You got to meet her. He's, 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 she made Billy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yay to her. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you, Donna Jean. I appreciate it. Thank you. And you guys out there, if you haven't seen Jordan Peele's Candyman, Go see it. Neil Acosta's Candyman joint film produced it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.